Welcome back to Tonight in San Diego. We want to thank our live studio audience here at the Jeffrey Theater downtown in beautiful San Diego. Give it up for yourselves for being here tonight. We appreciate you guys so much. We're giving away prizes like this. We're giving away a couple tickets to see Lucius with the cactus blossoms at the Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach. If you want to win tickets like this, just get your tickets to Tonight in San Diego at tonightinsandiego.com or go on social media and post something and hashtag us Tonight in San Diego. Our next guest is a political correspondent and consultant. Uh, we're very happy to have her here. Please welcome Rachel Lang. Oh, Rachel, thank you for coming on the show. It's wonderful to have you. We really need some political consulting right now. <laughs> you need therapy. We do. We need. Do you we do political therapy. therapy as well? Is that I, you a know, I, I'm thinking about starting that as a practice in yeah. my business because the this poli is. Poli sci and poli thair. I, don't I know. had to talk a lot of people off the ledge Did on election you? night. Wow, it is a scary scenario. Yeah. Um, what exactly? But besides talking people off the ledge in times like this, yeah. what else does a political consultant do? Mostly, we talk people onto the ledge. Onto the ledge. <laughs> like. Come on, you got to do this. Now, um, there's two types, but some do campaigns. I used to do that, but that's a young person's game. So now I do more of the um, lobbying, public affairs campaigns. So if you have a big issue or a big hairy project or something controversial, I manage that process, get you through the city council and, and the media and all that sort of thing. Okay. I have a pretty big issue. <laughs> he has a, Keith has okay. a big issue. It goes all the way to the top. It's a pretty big, is it a, is it a hairy issue though, Keith? <laughs> That's what we want to know. What's now your issue, got Keith? You got, uh, Keith, okay. save the issue. Are you want to ask her right now? I, I, we can save it. I don't know. Uh, ask away, because I want to know. Is there any hope for the next four years? Hope? That's a broad question, but. You know what? I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> start saving your money. Get your passports ready, people. Just be ready to flee. Oh my gosh. And picture, <laughs> uh, let, wait, let's imagine that I'm on the ledge right now. Is that the speech you're going to give? <laughs> is, that the, is that the answer? You know, buy, I keep just buy saying, canned food. I mean, come the on. only thing that we can hope is that his entire administration will be so incompetent that they will accomplish nothing and mm. everything will be the same in four years. I, it it's, just, it's, it's, is that it's worth? Hope. I think it'd be horrible to root for the president to be totally incompetent. But, <laughs> but, uh, but if that's the versus, best case scenario, versus abusive, uh, versus, sure. versus abu I'd rather you be yeah. an incompetent abuser is better than a competent abuser. Oh my I guess. gosh! Yeah. But so on the other side of the coin, I did see a picture of you uh, yes. with Hillary Clinton. What yes. is the? Do we have that picture to show? I don't know if we have. It's a good picture of you with Hillary, and I wondered what, uh, what was the story behind that. Um, well, I spent about four hours in a hot, sweaty gym um, waiting for her to come out in a rally, but I was in the VIP line. I, um, I have friends in high places, no. <laughs> and, uh, and I contributed, you know, a, a nice, sizable check to her campaign to okay. make sure that I got in that special little line yeah. and um, so that I could take my daughter. I took her out of school, took her up there. I just wanted her to meet the next president. Yeah. Well, anyway. Oh, so now you ask for your money. You ask for your money back now. No. Is that what you did? No, I, I would give it. I would give it all over again. I, I was so pleased to meet her. She reminds me of my mother. You know, just a strong, powerful woman. And I was. I'm devastated. To Why? Be honest, and, but. And, and here's a question I had. So you. You know, I. I know that you were. Uh, press secretary for uh, Jerry Sanders mm -hmm. from 2008 to 2012, mm -hmm. and you were in charge of managing his social media presence, right. correct? Right. Uh, well, first of all, in 2008, what was the social media, was that, that was, you were checking out his MySpace for him? And <laughs> He'd never had a MySpace. Let me help Jerry Sanders pick days, his top eight friends. Right, and, right, yeah. exactly. Early in the days of um, Facebook and Twitter, okay. um, people were, were saying, well, should we do this? And I said, well, well, let's give it a try. And, you know, fumbled through it, made some, made some mistakes. But I, I mean, San Diego political Twitter is unlike any political Twitter. It is fantastic. Great place where journalists and you know political figures and politicos just get together and obsess about politics together. It's really a when you and and when you manage thing. someone else's social uh -huh. media presence like that for politics, are there certain guidelines and certain things and policies that you try to implement so that they don't go off and start tweeting at 3 a.m. <laughs> weird things? Or <laughs> well, we always made you know Jerry Sanders was a lovable guy, funny as anybody, but. Um, but it, he was also, he, he could also be um, 
he, you know, he, could, he had a strong sense of sarcasm and stuff, so we'd say, you're not allowed to have your Twitter password, sir. But, <laughs> and, but, and that's what they did for Trump recently, I read. Is that true? That they, not for the same reasons, okay. but yes. <laughs> not, not for sarcasm, because he was actually Correct. being truthful, and, what right. he, and that, that's what he really felt when he said... Yes. But I, I always thought that was interesting, um, that while Hillary seemed to have a very well-oiled machine, and uh, uh, probably social media coaches and everything else, uh -huh. Trump clearly didn't seem to have any of that. No. And why is it that, you know, there's this perception of Hillary being unlikable? I mean, you met her in person. What do you think? Where does that come from? She is so likable in person, too. It's a funny thing. I mean, if she could only have gotten together and talked with a lot of people. Uh, I just think, you know, 30 years of a smear machine against you, very, very hard to overcome. And I've worked on some, some campaigns for folks who have had just relentless negativity, a barrage, millions spent to, to sort of take them down. And it's, it's very hard to surmount. And she's had it for 30 years. So does that mean that unfortunately, like, negative social media has more of an impact than, than going positive? I mean, that would be, I would hate well, to I hear think, that. I thought her social media was great. I mean, frankly, it was, it was well done. It was you know, presidential, yeah. um, but, but it's more the, the, you know, the other stuff, the, the news media stories over and over and over. And I mean, there were a lot of, there were a lot of jokes about on SNL and sort of about, yeah. about the um, relentless focus on her email sure. where Trump was doing something just scandalous and outrageous on a daily basis. And they were like, but email, you know, and like, yeah. the, like they had to cover both sides and media does that a lot where they feel like, well, we've got to sort of give both sides some kind of equivalency and they're not equivalent. They're not always equivalent. And yeah. I see it all the time in, in what I do is, um, you know, you have 10 opponents of a project and you have thousands of people supporting the project, but the 10 opponents get just as much attention mm. and they'll bring the, they'll protest with signs and they'll bring the cameras in close to make it look like there are hundreds of people when really yeah. it's Ten old guys that, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> and and I read something that you were saying about how the, the media only really gives attention to something when there are two really right. opposing uh, opinions on something. Exactly. So if it's something really important, they still might not cover it unless there's an opponent to it. Until there's conflict, there's certain they're biased toward conflict. So it may not be one side or the other, but if there's a conflict, if there are two warring sides. They're all over it. And do you Short -term think that rentals, great example, Airbnb, you know that sort of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. And in this political um, contest between these two, it seems like they were even more polarized than than usual. I felt like Trump got more attention by saying some of the crazy things he said mm -hmm. that she would then have to respond to, and it sort of elevated him to the the this sort of front runner. As and well, you know, it certainly gave him a lot of oxygen, a lot of attention, and people respond to strange things at different times and right now people people liked the sort of outrageous things that came out of his mouth they mistook that for authenticity yeah. when really nothing about him was authentic nothing that he said um, you could always find something he had, he had said contradictory two years before, but people could see them lined up. You know, he's saying Hillary Clinton was a great Secretary of State here, and then here he's saying she's a disaster. You know, but that's a good impression. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but um, but they uh, but, but people just they didn't want to see it. How do you just think people perceive uh, Bernie Sanders? I mean, I've heard from people that voted for Trump. We have some fans here. I, I heard from people that voted for Trump that were sort of saying they were trying to vote against the establishment. Right. Um, do you think that Bernie would have maybe taken some of those votes? In retrospect? In retrospect, yeah. In retrospect, I wish he had been the yeah, yeah. nominee. Although I would have been devastated because I always was, was for her sure. this, this time around. Yeah. What do you think about think the next election? Who, who do you think is going to run for that? And oh, is there a possibility of hope? I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm just getting out of my fetal position on the floor. <laughs> so. but, but I hope that, I hope that it, this isn't the last run for a woman. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah. Which I hope that we have another, maybe somebody who ha doesn't have the history and maybe somebody with, you know, a level of charisma that, that somebody is, as, you know, competent and wonky as Hillary was just didn't. Yeah, Unfortunately, it's yeah. kind of a shame that you could be qualified exactly. for 30 years in a position and not get it because of some perceived lack of charisma. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I, I'm really excited for people getting more involved now mm -hmm. in the political process. Yep. Um, there was a lot of stuff that happened locally in San yes. Diego, and of course, Prop 64 was passed. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a big deal, you guys. I'm a fan of that here. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I'm sure there's more than one. That is, <laughs> that is a big deal. Um, maybe you can tell us before we go to break here, what can we expect from that? And I mean, are they going to be selling weed everywhere? Can I get like in and out animal style weed now? Or what, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> How's that going to work? So, so it, it, best bet is the city of San Diego. The bet you, you're most likely is that they're going to take the medical marijuana dispensaries and they're going to um, convert them or allow them to convert. Um, so they, they have, I think, 14 in the city or 14 that are licensed so far. Not all of them are open. Um, but those folks, we hope that they'll get the... They'll get the, um, and then we'll have some because we have a sales tax now. Prop M, yeah. city of San Diego passed a sales tax and you're not gonna get a sales tax unless you have any of the, the proceeds from that unless you actually have retail sure. established. So it's gonna be great for the city, I'm sure. I, I hope so. Yeah. My idea is level the Midway District and just make it Little Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Little Amsterdam, I like that. I think we already have a place right. like that called Ocean Beach. But anyway, <laughs> um, Rachel, where, what's a good local uh, source for news of people that want to get involved in, in politics? If now? you really want to know what's going on locally and get a little deep, voiceofsandiego.org is my favorite site. Voice they, of they get Diego. deep and they're not, they're not just sort of playing the conflicts. Awesome. Well, check that out. Thank you so hey, much for coming on the show. Rachel Lang, everybody. Give it up for her. Terrific having you on the show. Really appreciate it. We'll be right back with more. Stick around. It's tonight in San Diego.